Hi, and welcome to the next section in the hyperparameter tuning chapter, which is on the mathematical uh, problem definition and its properties of the HPO, well, objective function, I guess. And um, yeah, what makes this uh, particularly um, a challenging as a expensive black box optimization problem. So, um, yeah. Let's recall again what, what um, hyperparameters are and what hyperparameter optimization is about. So hyperparameters, we'll denote them with this uh, bold vector lambda here, are parameters that are, um, well, hyperparameters that are inputs to the learning algorithm I, so to our inducing algorithm. So this is not an output, but an input to the algorithm. And uh, defining these hyperparameter basically fixes um, uh, the complete behavior of this training algorithm here, yeah, which usually performs empirical risk minimization on our training data set and then outputs optimal model parameters uh, theta. And hyperparameters can now influence the generalization performance of such an um, yeah, training algorithm and its resulting model in a, a non-trivial and subtle way. And hyperparameter optimization is simply the process of finding a well-performing hyperparameter configuration. So configuration is just, um, yeah, um, terminology for a concrete setting um, of all hyperparameters in um, the search space for a certain um, yeah, learning algorithm i, uh, which is uh, dependent here on this hyperparameter configuration. Now, um, let's um, yeah, fix mathematical notation a little bit more. So first of all, in order to uh, define a uh, formal optimization problem, we are now defining the search space. So um, this is uh, actually pretty simple. So we're assuming there uh, are L hyperparameters um, and they all um, yeah, have a certain, um, yeah, certain um, yeah, range of values they can take and usually we'll denote that with a capital lambda, lambda I or lambda J. And here you are seeing me putting a, a tilde on top of that thing because uh, this uh, lambda uh, j space is uh, yeah, the complete unrestricted space of all values that that hyperparameter can take. Usually for a hyperparameter optimization, not for all algorithms, but for many, we need uh, usually um, yeah, a, bounded, a bounded range. Um, so this lambda tilde here is a selection um, of certain hyperparameters we actually wanna optimize and not keep at their default values. And we are also allowing ourselves uh, to um, subset um, the complete range to usually some, some bounded interval. And these um, parameters can be continuous, they can also be discrete or they can also be categorical. Uh, um, there could even be kind of a hierarchical structure here on that space, which will be um, uh, the topic of a later section when we discuss um, auto ML a bit more. And the general HPO um, problem is now simply defined as uh, minimize this uh, cost function here over the search space. And this cost function uh, is um, simply the cross validated error or the, esti uh, or the estimated generalization error when we, um, yeah, for example, cross validate or resample our inducing algorithm I with a a certain set of resampling splits, capital J, uh, when we evaluate with the performance metric rho, yeah, uh, on some, some given data set D. And um, with uh, lambda star, I'll usually denote the uh, theoretical optimum of the, um, um, yeah, of the uh, um, C function, of the uh, true C objective function, and uh, lambda hat would uh, usually be our um, estimated, um, yeah, estimated lambda vector, so the result of our tuning algorithm. So here we have the objective function again, and here's, uh, I hope, a nice visualization of how this is uh, operationalized and, and computed. I guess um, yeah, you can already see that from this uh, definition here. So there's uh, nothing too fancy happening. So during optimization, what happens is that um, our optimizer, yeah, so maybe let's, let's talk about the input first. So data set goes in and then all of that other stuff goes in here that we need to define our objective function. So, so the training, 
training algorithm goes in, the performance metric rho goes in, um, the split sp splitting of the data set uh, j goes, goes in, and the search space lambda tilde, uh, capital lambda tilde goes in. And then we propose a new configuration. Um, um, usually this, this proposal configuration I denote with a lambda plus. Then we evaluate that by resampling. Uh, so we take our data set, we split it up according to this uh, splitting strategy here. So maybe that's a, I don't know, five-fold cross-validation. Um, we cross-validate our learning algorithm. Um, we evaluate its predictions with uh, lambda rho. Uh, we evaluate its, its prediction with the um, performance metric rho here and uh, the inducing algorithm here is configured by this um, yeah, currently proposed um, hyperparameter uh, configuration lambda plus. And after that has happened, we return the um, result. So this uh, C value here of that configuration, so the cross-validated score of that hyperparameter configuration goes into the optimizer. Um, we hopefully somehow update some internal state in our optimizer so we can um, yeah, smartly uh, improve on the results we have obtained until, um, until here and then iterate and go on. And at the end, we return this, um, this estimated uh, lambda hat here. Um, um, Evaluations are usually stored in what we call an archive. So that's also nothing too fancy. So this is just all of the configurations and their associated cost values that we've evaluated. We uh, um, put them in there. So um, later on, we can potentially analyze them or um, for, for partial archives. Uh, this is also what our optimizer would, would act on and where it can hopefully draw information from. And I use this um, um, curly A here as a symbol for the archive and I'm and we are using that, um, that index T here over time for uh, usually for iterations of the optimizer. We can also define if we want to our uh, tuning, tuning algorithm now as a mapping um, from a data set, from an inducing algorithm, from search space, resampling strategy and performance metric row to such an output configuration. And that's kind of a nice little abbreviation for that, for that complex beast here that we just described. Now, finally, um, after we have defined that, that objective function, which uh, I guess wasn't too hard, yeah, so we just um, set, set a given setting, um, set, a, set the hyperparameter configuration in our learning algorithm and then, then cross it and, and see what happens. I guess because we want to talk about um, optimization algorithms or a potential candidate algorithms for, for, for such problems later on, it's probably a good idea if you know mathematically think a little bit about what properties uh, that C function has. So um, our first insight is that um, this um, C function is usually probably a black box function. So that we could also call that a derivative free function. So usually no derivatives of that C function are available in, in analytical form. We can't easily as a formula input them into our um, optimization algorithm, which means we can't really rely on gradients or Hessian matrices. So um, yeah, first order or second order information and many classical numerical optimization algorithms uh, are of such a nature and, and require that information. And the reason for that is, um, yeah, I can write down the mathematical definition of that, of that C function here, but how are we actually evaluating that guy here? Yeah. So this is like Resump the resump performance measure. So this is a cross validation, or even in the simplest uh, case, this is training the algorithm, taking the model, then predicting it on something else, evaluating with the performance metric row. So many of these components, I mean, the performance metric row that doesn't even have to be uh, differentiable, but even if it would be, um, yeah, it's it's we don't really have a formula, a nice analytical formula uh, as a kind of a single line here available to us. So with pen and paper, we can then compute the derivative. So this is more or less a computer program that we are running and that we can evaluate um, for a given given uh, hyperparameter configuration. But we can't really analytically compute um, the derivatives. Um, another um, yeah, property that's connected with that is that every evaluation is probably quite expensive so it, it requires potentially multiple training and predict steps uh, if it's a cross validation or at least one training and one predict step if it's just a simple holdout evaluation procedure 
And uh, training that model on medium to large data sets can actually uh, take some time. And so usually this, um, um, yeah, this uh, C function is uh, somewhat expensive to, to evaluate. So we'll call that an expensive black box optimization problem. And this expensiveness has one pretty direct consequence, and that is that we cannot really assume that we can um, perform hundreds, a hundred thousand or a few million um, evaluations of that function. So there's kind of a, a coarse, um, um, I don't know, coarse resolution of the space where we can actually gather information from the objective function. And we'll always have to act under a um, quite severely limited budget um, for our evaluations. And after, I don't know, maybe a few hundred, a few thousand, maybe if you are very lucky, a few 10K evaluations, we have to make a choice um, for our um, yeah, returned um, hyperparameter configuration. And um, that can actually be um, yeah, quite difficult uh, to, to kind of uh, ensure that this is of good performance. And what's even worse, and not every algorithm necessarily um, necessarily kind of uh, tries to address that problem, but mathematically it's certainly true. The answer we get from that evaluation is stochastic um, because we use resampling. Uh, even if we fix the cross-validation splits or if we just do a single training test split, um, yes, this uh, can look like, a, I don't know, a deterministic evaluation or de 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 deterministic value that we are computing there, a fixed one. Um, but this is just because we're kind of seeding um, the stochastic procedure. Um, yeah, there's, there's, um, there are many different uh, uh, splits that we can take. And we, in a certain sense, we should take the, the variance that that stochastic evaluation um, uh, in course um, yeah, into, um, into consideration when we, when we optimize that problem. And also our machine learning algorithm itself can be stochastic. And so think about, for example, the random forest or something like that, we would run that again. Uh, this would um, create um, a different model. Uh, and if we would cross validate that all, the, the cross validated score would be, would be somewhat stochastic. Um, one major problem also um, in terms of designing appropriate optimization algorithms is that um, the search space can have categorical parameters. It can have, can even have dependent hyperparameters. So, so hyperparameters that are subordinate um, to other hyperparameters. So usually the, the, um, you know, the parent hyperparameter is something categorical. So, so some, some, some sub algorithm that runs inside of the training procedure. And if we set that to A, B, C, or D, yeah, then I don't know, for algorithm A, there's kind of a dependent hyperparameter gamma and, um, for, for setting B, there's a dependent hyperparameter delta, and then you get that hierarchical structure in your, in your search space, making everything uh, even more complicated. And because of all of these properties uh, taken, taken together, I, I guess just taking one of them is kind of enough to rule out uh, many of the uh, classical uh, standard optimization algorithms that you might have seen, like, I don't know, gradient descent or um, second order algorithms. I mean, most of them are, are yeah, made for purely numerical parameters. They are made for stuff where you have first order or second order derivative information and so on. And so all of that is basically not applicable in the general HPR scenario. Um, 